Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hope you're having a great week. Um, I'm here. I'm I'm tired. I'm here. Kind of jet lagged. <laughs> Spent the last couple days out uh, out in Arizona, and uh, it was uh, it was awesome. It was amazing, but it definitely was uh, it was a long trip, and it gets uh, you know throws the body off a little bit being uh, over there for a couple days, then coming back here. So it was uh, just a, a a good long trip. Had a lot of fun. Uh, and we'll be able to talk about some pretty cool stuff in a few weeks. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to talk about a whole lot uh, in terms of what I was hitting. But uh, I may be, uh, let you know about uh, being out there. It was pretty cool. Before we get going today, I want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist New AVX Golf Ball. Uh, the new AVX is a premium alternative to Pro V1, Pro V1X. I know not everybody knows that, um, but it is built on that same quality, that same level. Um, you know, new for this year, the brand new ball. It's got a new, a new core formulation, uh, a new higher flexing case layer, uh, softer cast urethane elastomer cover system, and a new dimple design for improved aerodynamics. And uh, to be honest, the AVX is going to give you really low long game and iron spin. Uh, it delivers probably the lowest flight out of the three, Pro V1X, Pro V1, uh, and then AVX. Uh, and then, uh, you know, longer distance, a little softer feel, and but it still gives you control around the green. So uh, it's available in white or, of course, high optic yellow. And if you go to Titleist.com and check out more about the AVX, great new ball. Um, yeah, like I said, if you're looking for something low spin, lower launch, I know a lot of people are. Uh, the AVX uh, is is definitely worth something to try. And I know it's not everybody on everybody's radar, but uh, it, it should be if that's what you're looking for. So, yeah, it was uh, um, a good week. Like I said, I, I, I took off Monday morning extremely early. I think my flight left Detroit at uh, 7 a.m., which was um, early, uh, definitely early. I think I woke up at uh, like four. I think I woke up at four. I left my house at like 4:30. Maybe a little after, I don't know, whatever. But it was uh, it was early, and then flew out uh, flew out to uh, to Arizona. I was out there for uh, until yesterday. Uh, yesterday evening is when I got in, so it was um, yeah, just a wild time. Um, got to go hang out at uh, at Scottsdale National, which was awesome. Uh, the place is unbelievable, and the funny thing is, I've, it was the first time I've ever been there. Um, but I've been told by a lot of people how amazing it is. Uh, you know, and there's so much about it that, that's so cool, and uh, it lived up to every single thing that I've heard about it. It was, um, it was amazing. It, uh, it's just an amazing place, and uh, I know it's not necessarily accessible to a lot of people. I mean, I think membership is, is very low, and it's very exclusive and, uh, and all that, but uh, having the opportunity to go play it, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty amazing so uh, it was a good time um it was an absolute blast uh congratulations to uh andy sullivan uh, the average golfer uh, if you look him up on uh on instagram i think it's the average golfer 99 uh is his handle i think i might be wrong on that uh but uh, he got a he got a hole in one uh in our group uh on the 16th hole which was crazy uh you know just hit a ball that never left the flag it hit rolled up disappeared and uh it was it was pretty cool to see so uh, that's the first hole in one that I've ever actually been a part of. That I've actually seen physically in in person, uh, all that. And uh, I never myself have never had one. Uh, for for Andy, he's uh, actually had a few. So <laughs> congratulations to him. But uh, played with him, uh, Ryan Knoll, and uh, we played with uh, Brian uh, Baumgartner. Is that what I say it right? Yeah, Baumgartner, uh, or as you know him, Kevin uh, from the office. And uh, it was it was pretty awesome. And I do have to say, Brian is a an amazing guy. He's a total golf junkie, club guy. He like loves it. Him and I sat there and had lunch uh, on was it Wednesday? Um, I don't know. One of the days. It was either. It might have been Tuesday. No, it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Um, yesterday we uh, we had lunch. And we were actually just sitting at the at this uh, at this bar just having lunch, and we were just you know a couple seats from each other, and we just started kind of chatting about golf. You know where he likes to play, where he plays, his you know bucket list courses, things like that. And then we just got into golf grips, and we literally for thirty minutes, well maybe it was twenty minutes, twenty minutes, sat there and talked about golf grips and stuff that he's tried, stuff that he likes, um, kind of differences between cord and whatever. Talked about little leather grips. I mean, it was just, uh, uh, it was it was pretty cool. So we uh, we chatted a good amount about some golf and uh, and some grips, and it was just funny just to sit there and, and kind of look at it and be like. I'm talking to a, an extremely famous actor, and we're talking about probably what most people consider a stupid, boring topic 
club grips, but we were both into it. Um, and just, you know, having a good time. And like I said, he's, uh, he's a club guy, man. He like he, he loves, uh, he loves new gear and stuff like that. And we, uh, we had some fun. So he's, uh, and he's, he's a pretty decent golfer too. He can, he can putt. I'll tell you what, boy can putt. So, uh, yeah, we played a little, uh, two man best ball match and, uh, I think Brian dropped two 60 footers on us and uh, Andy knocked in a hole in one and that was about all she wrote. So we, uh, I think we were up two going into like 15 and I think 15, Brian dropped his second 60 footer on us uh, on 15. Uh, Sullivan made his hole in one on 16 <laughs> and then we just kind of crumbled on 17 to lose. Uh, and then, uh, you know, 18 was just, just having fun. So uh, it was a bummer. It was a bummer. So uh, lost uh, lost a, uh, a a buck or two to uh, to Kevin and a Kevin from the office or Brian uh, Baumgartner. But uh, like I said, super fun. Had a great time. Um, you know, it was just Scottsdale Nationals crazy. The food there. I mean, everything about it is absolutely top notch. Um, it was just really exciting. So I'll, I'll get into more of it uh, when I'm able to talk about uh, uh, more of what I was doing there. Um, but I'll just say that, uh, it was, it was a kind of a once in a lifetime experience in a sense. And, uh, it was, it was very, it was very, I was very fortunate that, uh, that I got to go and, and do all that. So, um, ton of fun. Uh, but like I said, tired, uh, got home last night, uh, in time to kind of have a late dinner, put my daughter to bed. And then, uh, basically my wife was just trying to keep me awake uh, on the couch <laughs> while we, uh, we watched a show and, and then I went to bed. I mean, I was, I was, I was done. So. Um, like I said, long day, and, uh, and today is going to be just trying to get into uh, catching up on some emails and stuff like that. I mean, you guys all know how it is. You're out, out for a couple of days, and the email box doesn't stop. So try to get try some of that stuff done, and then uh, I'm going to put my Scottsdale National uh, hat up there since I don't have any physical product to, to have in my hands today. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about, um, it, it may be a little shorter episode just because like I said, I was, I was gone all week and, you know, I, I'm not quite as prepared as I usually am, which doesn't mean a lot because I typically wing a lot of these shows. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the, maybe I'll superimpose like a, a uh, I'll sum this over here and I'll maybe superimpose a photo of uh, the Bushnell Launch Pro Launch Monitor. So um, I've had my hands on this thing for, for a couple weeks now and uh, a huge thank you to, uh, to Bushnell for sending one over. Um, and I know, you know, audience wise, you guys are, have always been asking me a lot about launch monitors and, you know, what's out there, what, uh, you know, you should get whatever. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, in terms of, is there one launch monitor for everyone? I don't know that there necessarily is because it all really depends on what you're going to use it for, how you're going to use it uh, and, and all that. I mean, there's, you know, guy and, and everybody's got different budgets and things like that. So I don't think there's a, a one size fits all yet, uh, in the launch monitor game, but the personal launch monitor just the launch monitor game in general has it's just becoming an, an awesome space of just so many quality quality items that are, are, are units to, to choose from depending on what you want the technology is just going crazy fast in terms of uh you know how, how more accurate things are getting how more features the simulation stuff uh all that is, is just getting going crazy i mean it's it, it's wild to see how fast that stuff is growing and accelerating and, and what's coming. And, you know, we all know the big boys, you know, the, the GC quad, the uh, track man, um, those are all kind of the, the two that you see on tour everywhere. Um, you know, but, but unfortunately those are extremely expensive units in the, you know, the $20,000 range and not everybody's got $20,000 uh, to spend on a launch monitor. Um, if you do, you will not be disappointed with either unit. I know the GC quad has been kind of a hot one lately. Um, but, I mean, if you have that kind of money, um, you know, like you said, they're, they're trusted on tour by, you know, the tour professionals. So if you have that uh, in your budget, just go get one. You won't be disappointed. Um, but for the rest of us, uh, that, that, that number is a little out of reach. And, uh, you know, there's now stuff that starts at, you know, a couple hundred dollars uh, and goes all the way up, uh, depending on what, you're, what you want, what you need, and again, you know, what your budget is. And uh, it's interesting. So Foresight, uh, who make the GC Quad, who, again, that's probably one of the hottest launch monitors out there right now, uh, the GC Quad and TrackMan, but GC Quad's tending to get a little more love lately. Uh, I think the indoor use of that, uh, the indoor accuracy with the cameras, is kind of a huge thing, especially with, you know, half the country who, you know, I'm part of it, where you're stuck indoors for five months, four months, whatever it is. Uh, you know, hitting indoors, uh, into nets, simulation, whatever, 
The GC Quad, I think, has become a big thing for that because the camera units tend to do pretty well indoors. They don't, uh, you know, they're, they're watching, they're, they're literally watching the club head, watching the ball, and it, it, they tend to be, you know, from, you know, and, and I'm no absolute expert. I don't have any, like, crazy testing lab here that, you know, but they tend to be, it, it seems a little more accurate, um, you know, where the radar systems are great outdoors and things like that. So, uh, it really depends on, on what you're looking for, but uh, Foresight, uh, who, make, like I said, makes that GC Quad, has now also come out with the GC3, which uh, instead of having four cameras like the huge unit, it's got three cameras on it. Um, so I, I think the camera-wise, losing a camera, uh, it still gives you a lot of club data. I think it just loses um, some really, you know, compared to GC Quad, I think it just loses a couple kind of club data slash, uh, slash ball data uh, items, and I think it's something like dynamic loft and or, or dynamic spin or something like that it's it's something that you typically don't care as much about or you, you probably wouldn't uh, maybe inside of fitting you would but but outside that it, it probably isn't something that you have to have to have so it, it doesn't lose a ton uh the gc3 but what they did is basically have a gc3 and then Bushnell has the exact same hardware, the same unit. And like I said, maybe I'll, if you watch this on YouTube, uh, on Golf WX Radio YouTube, maybe I'll have it like superimposed over here on the right, um, the unit. But uh, a, a really a, a little more compact unit uh, than the GC Quad. And it's got three cameras on it. So like I said, a little, inex little less, less expensive. So Foresight partnered with Bushnell. So you can go and, you know, buy a GC3. And a GC3... I think is right around nine thousand uh, dollars, something like that. And again, not something that's in everyone's budget. Uh, so they partnered with Bushnell, and Bushnell has the exact same hardware, exact same case. They do have the Bushnell logo on it, uh, but I think it also has the. It, it, I'm, like I said, government. It does also have the the Foresight logo on it. Um, it has both, but the exact same unit, exact same hardware, and they've built it into a subscription model. So. Uh, you can get into this unit and get all, you know, get the features at a little less expensive price, especially if you don't need everything. Um, so what they've done is you you can buy the unit for three thousand uh, dollars. Let me just make sure that's one hundred percent correct, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents uh, is the the actual purchase price, and uh, this is going to get you. You know, uh, an extremely accurate unit um, with three cameras on it, and it's going to get you pretty much the critical ball data that uh, that you need. It's not going to be any club head data, uh, and that's just going to be basically the what they call the basic plan, which is the basic software. Uh, the first year is totally free. After that, it's ninety nine bucks uh, for the year, but you get carry distance, ball speed, spin, a total spin number, horizontal launch, vertical launch. Club head speed, excuse me, and smash factor. Uh, so you'll get, you know, uh, total, you know, uh, so you'll get total distance, uh, offline distance, de descent angle, and peak height uh, along with it. Um, now, the club head speed, smash factor, um, those are both going to need to have a little sticker on the club, which they send you a whole packet of stickers. Uh, but it does, unlike GC Quad, which you had like five stickers uh, on the head, this has like one little sticker that goes at the very top of the club. And it's kind of a, a small kind of circle with a little uh, line on it. So it's kind of like a stick wheel. With, it looks almost like a little person in a sense, but um, <clears throat> a little unique uh, marking on it compared to, to some of the other units that do look at, at club data. Um, so it's, it's, it's not bad. It, it, you don't have stickers all over the face. It's just uh, right on the center of the club head. So once you have that, uh, you know, stick on there, you'll get that uh, club head speed smash factor, all that. Um, if you don't have a sticker on a club, you can still get all the ball data, which is really nice. And, uh, you know, the unit itself has a, a pretty big screen. Uh, it displays a lot of that data right on the, the screen right there. So even if it's something where you take to the range and sure you may have your iPad or phone, whatever connected to it, you can still just look on that screen and see, you know, your carry number, your spin number, or your, you know, um, your launch angle, all that right on the screen. Uh, and the screen is touchscreen, which is kind of nice. Um, but I don't think the GC Quad is even touchscreen. Um, and this one is. So you can actually you know, go in there, jump in the menu, all that stuff. Um, but it's a, a, a really, like I said, a little more compact unit. It has that touchscreen, three cameras, offers all that uh, in the basic subscription. Um, and it's actually wireless as well. So if you set it up to, uh, you know, even if you set it up at your home, you have a hitting bay or a net or a screen, whatever you're hitting into, 
it's wireless, so it's you know can wireless to your PC uh, if you've got a connection there. Um, you know, to run through a projector, if you're just using like an iPad or whatever, uh, you can basically run it off the battery, uh, which lasts a good long time. Uh, I know, I think, it, I'm trying to see, remember what it says, like, does it says the, it hit, like, said the hours, and I was using it, and, and, like, I'd use it, like, you know, hour and a half, or whatever, and, it, you know, hour and a half, and you'd look, and, like, it, it still looked like it was, like, fully charged, so, uh, battery-wise, I think it's going to be really good, I haven't ran it down to nothing yet, um, but then again, I haven't been able to, uh, sit outside for that long without absolutely freezing so <laughs> maybe here in uh, the next couple uh, days or weeks i can get that a little closer um and i'm going to say if you're looking here i don't have the unit here because one of the guys at the office wanted to try it uh, in his little hitting bay and his net so he's got it right now hitting it so that's why you're not seeing it right in front of me which um which a little <laughs> which is unfortunate but it's just that kind of thing where everybody wants to to see you know everybody wants to try it everybody wants to see how it works um everybody's super interested in in, in this piece so um like I said, so you get the basic data with that, that basic plan, um, which for a lot of people is, is kind of what they're looking for. They want to dial in their clubs. They want to, um, you know, see their carry distances, launch angles, things like that. Um, and those things are important, and, and they're all offered in that, uh, that basic plan. Um, the only thing you don't get with it that I think a, a lot of people, uh, you know, would, would want in terms of the one thing that you don't really have, um, you know, you don't have the actual... Uh, simulation software uh, with it, and, and I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, I was trying to just double check that uh, on my, um, you know, here. I don't think you get the actual simulation stuff uh, with that. Uh, with that, the uh, with just the basic plan. I think you have to move up to gold to go the actual simulation software and get like the uh, to play actual courses. Um, again, I, I don't want to be 100 100 percent on that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, that you don't get, uh, like I said, you don't get the um, the simulation portion of it, the the, the courses uh, with that, which is, uh, yeah, it is, okay, I'm kind of like on the website as I'm going here. Um, <clears throat> so they, they don't have that, but you get all, like I said, the basic data, you use all the, the Foresight software, so FX Pro um, is basically built, so when, you know, if you've ever hit on a, a GC Quad or GC2 or whatever, any of those Foresight, uh, you have like that range, so you can you know kind of see the ball flight, all that, um, and it's super fast. I mean, like you hit a ball and it's like instant. You're watching, you know, ball flight go. Uh, you're getting the club data coming right up, or the ball data coming right up on the screen. Um, it's pretty much instant, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can get into the other, you know, uh, subscriptions. There they have a uh, a silver subscription, which is three ninety nine, so four hundred bucks a year, uh, and that will basically get you even more. Uh, information or you know more data but it ad definitely adds in the um, I think it's FSX 2020 which is the simulation software so you can go play courses you know and actually play golf with uh, with the unit which is actually pretty good um, I do have to say the one thing that is always kind of funky about simulation uh, you know golf is always kind of the short game uh, especially the putting but chipping putting is always kind of brutal uh, or not brutal, but it's always kind of clunky and heavy and doesn't really work that great. This is pretty darn good. Uh, I think, you know, having the cameras on there and, and being able, you know, to have that really just pick up the ball and pick up the club uh, and all that, it, it really does, it really does work decent. I do have to say, it's probably some of the best putting uh, that I've ever used in a simulator uh, with this, G with this uh, uh, Launch Pro. It really is, it's really not bad. I mean, is it absolutely perfect? No, because you're trying to kind of set up a, a stimp on, on the simulation and, and you're trying to, you know, kind of figure that out with your turf or whatever, you know, setup you have at home. It's not perfect, but it's 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 pretty darn good. It, it was much better than I expected. You can, of course, go into the simulation software and set up gimmies or whatever uh, for your round. Uh, but the club data, in terms of hitting balls, extremely accurate. You know, if you hit a big duck hook, which I tend to really do, I can duck hook it into the woods, and uh, it, it is it is very accurate in terms of what you're seeing in ball flight uh, and and uh, you know how it relates to these courses. So um, you know the silver subscription, 400 bucks a year, but it gets you you know not only all the you know the the ball data and all that, but it also gets you into uh, the simulation stuff as well. And then they have a gold subscription, which you actually get a free 30 days of when you buy the unit. Um, that one's 800 bucks a month, but then you start adding in all of the uh, 
uh, all of the club data basically. So you get the you know spin tilt axis, backspin, side spin, uh, club path, angle of attack. Uh, you get all that information uh, as long as you get uh, you know you get the the range, you get you know the dispersion. Uh, you know all that stuff is is added in. Um, and then, of course, when you get into simulation, you can have more players. Uh, there's some online play, all that. Um, so there's a, a lot of it. Uh, and, and then in, the, in the, the gold as well, you can get kind of the, the weather adjustment. So if, you, uh, if you're if you at a higher uh, elevation, you're somebody who lives in like Denver, you can set your, uh, your elevation and set your barometer, all that stuff, the weather. Uh, but yeah, you get... You know your spin tilt axis, uh, so you get backspin, side spin, club path, angle of attack, all that jazz with gold. And like I said, gold is is eight hundred a year, and that's gonna pretty much get you just about everything um, that you have. And uh, like I said, eight hundred bucks a year, but it is pretty. I mean, that's pretty much like I mean, you have a full blown launch monitor, and then uh, they have basically an, an unlock uh, version, which basically. You get gold, so it's a basically a gold package, and you just pay three thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars one time, and it is unlocked for the, as long as you own it. So forever, uh, it is unlocked. You get uh, more online stuff in terms of like you know more sessions saved, more cloud storage, things like that, along with it. But uh, yeah, I mean ten courses, all that, but it's absolutely unlocked. There's nothing there that uh, you'll ever have to pay for again. Which again gets it into a price range that not everyone is is comfortable with, which is you know a, kind of a nice thing about Bushnell is that, you know, after the the, the, the three thousand dollars that you buy the unit, you can kind of choose where you want to be, and then you could also change stuff. You know, maybe maybe the first year you you run on basic, and then you realize, hey, you know what, I do want a little bit more. You know, you you, you go to silver, and you realize, hey, the simulation, I'd like you know more of the club data and things like that. Um, so you can kind of move up and down. Uh, in those those packages, which is, which is kind of nice, so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just one set price for everyone. You know, things can be, and then also too, not everybody wants everything. You know, like not everybody wants the the simulation side. Some people just want the launch monitor side, the basic launch monitor data that they're going to get, um, which is a, a good amount. I mean, honestly, if you look at just like you know that that basic subscription and and what you get on that, I mean, for the most part. You know, you don't get, you know, sure, you don't get the backspin, side spin, and spin tilt axis, um, but not everybody wants that. Um, you're still going to get total spin number, uh, the carry distance, the ball speed. You're going to get basically what most personal launch monitors give you. You're getting it with the Launch Pro and the basic plan. Um, you know, like I said, in terms of total distance and, and things like that, um, you know, you're, you're getting all that. And, and a lot of people, that's just what they want, especially, you know, us people in the north in the winter when you're just trying to you know, keep your game sharp or, you know, make sure you're hitting it solid, whatever. I mean, the basic stuff is pretty much all you need. And, and for some launch monitors, that's all you get. Like, you don't have an option for more. Um, and the other side of it, it, it tends to be pretty darn accurate. Um, we kind of had it set up next to, uh, we do have a, a trackman in the office that kind of roams around a few between a few people. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm not one of those people who really has it much um it's one of those things where i unfortunately live a little further away from a couple of the guys that that use it use it the most so i don't quite get it as often uh but we had it and and being able to hit it kind of next to trackman and the numbers were extremely extremely close i mean almost identical it seemed like uh, there just was no uh there's just n i mean like i said the, the amount of difference is, is something that i would never be able to even tell uh in, in terms of real life i mean spin you're talking like Hundred of R, you know, hundred RPM, maybe even less, uh, maybe a couple shots with, with a little bit more when you get down lower in the you know the the wedges things like that, um, you know maybe a couple hundred, but it wasn't anything. I don't think there was a shot that was more than like three hundred RPM difference uh, between the two, um, and then in terms of launch angle, all that they were almost absolutely spot on, so extremely close. We had another radar launch monitor in there um, as well that was much farther off. Uh, it, it seemed, and again, you know, radar stuff indoors tends not to be quite as as accurate. Um, but this thing is, you know, like I said, especially indoors, really, really, really good. Um, it just immediately, as soon as you hit the ball, immediately, immediately gives you the you know a bunch of numbers in terms of you know the launch angle, uh, the ball speed, things like that. And they never seem to be off. Everything was super consistent. You never had a shot that really felt like it was anywhere but close to what to what you ha uh, to what you saw um you know the 
you know, I, we went from like, you know, I kind of, I didn't hit every club in my bag, but basically hitting, you know, starting from wedges, moving up, going to like seven iron, uh, and then going to, you know, basically like a, a hybrid and then, um, and then driver. And to be honest, like nothing was, no, you know, it, it all seemed to be like right there. And like I said, even having, uh, you know, for one of the sessions, having a track man in there and like I said, being exactly the same. I mean, launch angles were, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 different between the, the two units. And, and to be honest, seeing the camera stuff and all that, that, that the launch pro has, I, I might even think that that's slightly more accurate than the track man might be. Um, but the launch pro was really, really good, uh, especially indoors. O outdoors, I mean, it, it was it was good as well. Um, you know, had, I, I took it outside for one session. I probably had three indoors. Um, you know, we kind of hit had kind of two range sessions and then did some simulation stuff, hit played a few holes. Um, but the honestly, the, the the indoor stuff, you know, hitting into a net, having the, you know, the or not even net, a, a screen, you know, it, it was just like, it, it was like going into a fitting. I mean, it was going like going into a fitting bay uh, anywhere else. And it was, you know, that same foresight screen, all that stuff, uh, or foresight range, all that was, you know, it, it just felt like you were hitting on a $20,000 unit. It, it really did. I mean, it really felt like that's what you were playing on was, you know, if you didn't know and you just, you know, had a black box cover in the unit and you didn't know what you were hitting on, you, you would probably think you were hitting on GC quad. I mean, it's just that it's, it's that quick, that accurate. Everything was like wireless. The only thing we had it plugged in, uh, of course, to like a, uh, to the, the wall outlet, um, but everything else wireless. So, I mean, if, if you do take it out into the range or you need to move it around, um, you know, if you've got a, a lefty in the group and you need to swing it around for a lefty, you know, all that stuff is super easy to do, um, and, and it connects up, like, right away. I mean, you just, it, it took longer to start the computer up and get that going than it did, uh, you know, than it did to, uh, to get the, the GC or the, the, or the Launch Pro up and going uh, right away. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the accuracy side of it is extremely good. Um, so, excuse me, the other thing, too, is, is club data. Club data is fantastic. Once you put on uh, the sticker, uh, the downside is I, I brought, like, not even downside, but I brought, like, a whole bag full of stuff. So I had a couple drivers in there, had a couple different, you know, clubs and everything. Um, and not everything had a sticker on it, which, you know, you didn't get the club data with it. But it was fine, so because you, you still got all the ball data, it was extremely accurate, and you just didn't, you know, you just didn't get the club data, which, you know, it's fine. You didn't get club path and things like that. Um, but honestly, it didn't really stop my enjoyment of using it because most of the other units that you you tend to use, the club data is either kind of iffy or you just don't get it at all anyway. So, um, you know, not having it there, uh, if you're somebody who doesn't want to put stickers or, you know, you're like me, you have a ton of clubs and just everything's not stickered up, um, which, you know, if, if, you know, I'll get to that where I'll get more stickers on these things. But, um, you know, if you're somebody who just, you know, like me, if you're just tinkering around or a buddy comes over, he doesn't want to put stickers on his clubs or whatever, it's not going to affect how good the ball data is. And, uh, we didn't have, there's no stickers on the golf ball, uh, anything like that. You just move a ball into the center of the, you know, into the hitting area, which just like, uh, you know, four up medals, four up medals in the past, it has a little image on the screen it says, move the ball into the hitting zone. You, you know, slide the ball over. It sees it right where it is. As soon as it's in the zone, you're ready to hit and you go. Um, so extremely simple to use, extremely easy, very familiar to a lot of people who have, you know, use launch monitors in the past and things like that. Um, but like I said, connectivity is really easy. Uh, if I had to give it kind of one little knock, um, I would say that the, you know, the iPad, uh, software is a little slow. Uh, it, it's a little slow and you know, like getting in and out of things. Um, but on the PC, it was way better. Like I said, we have a PC in uh, in the one hitting bay and, and using it there. Um, very, I mean, much quicker, uh, like I said, instant to watch ball flight and things like that. Um, like I said, the iPad's a, a little bit slower, and it was a fairly new iPad too. It wasn't even like uh, an older one, which I have actually have an older one, and it didn't it didn't really like that. Uh, but uh, one of the guys in the office has a brand new, or I think a year old, something like that. Um, and it was just a, a little slow there, a little clunkier there in terms of of how it functioned. But the PC side, it was it was very quick and and exactly what uh, you would expect from seeing you know launch monitor stuff, uh, you know online or you know going into fittings and all that much like that uh using it i mean it's it definitely has a super high-end feel to it the unit itself is great i mean it's it, it's definitely portable 
Um, it's got actually, actually a little handle behind the screen that you can just pick it up with. Uh, but moving it around is, is really easy. It's, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, it's nothing, nothing crazy in terms of, uh, of getting it. And then, like I said, going to the range, um, you know, if it's not a home place where you just have it set up and it's there, you just pick it up and go and you take it to the range, you set it down and there you go. Like you're all, all set to go. I mean, there's no, there's nothing really to it. There's no, nothing that you really have to change to take it from one place to another to go hit. So if it's something where you have a, a setup at home with a net or a screen or whatever, you have kind of a, a setup at home, but then you, you know, you want to go to the range and, and hit balls. It, it travels super easy and it's, like I said, the battery life seems to be really good. I, I have not run it down to zero yet, but you will for sure get easily two hours out of it because I've hit it for two hours on battery with, with, with no problem. Um, and I don't think too many people are going to, you know, need to go, you know, two hours plus on the range. I don't think, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have that kind of time, unfortunately with, uh, <laughs> with, with, uh, you know, a job and a family. So, you know, maybe some of you, you single people who cannot go out to the range all day and hit balls, you could maybe test that battery limits a little longer than I can. Um, but no, but overall, uh, I'm super impressed with the launch pro. Um, you know, like I said, the, the launch monitor side of it is really cool. It, it's, it's definitely accurate enough where if you're, I mean, it's accurate if you do fittings with it. I mean, let's be honest. You could do fittings with it, um, but it's awesome for us home people who, you know, want to hit two drivers next to each other and see what we're looking at in terms of launch and spin and, uh, and all that. And if you have, uh, you know, two different shafts and driver and you want it to kind of tinker around much, you know, you can definitely feel confident that there's enough accuracy there that you can compare those two clubs, whether you're indoors or outdoors. Uh, and then also too, you know, the, the club data, if you want to sticker it up, uh, you know, which... I do have to say that the stickering portion you de you probably definitely want to do if you could test Smash Factor and things like that. Um, but if you don't care so much about those necessary things, you don't have to sticker up uh, anything. And, and honestly, the stickers aren't bad. You're not putting, you know, what is it? I think it's four or five stickers on a, a driver head or a club head with uh, like a GC quad or whatever it is. This one has a single sticker that goes in the dead center. So, um, so for that, you do get, you know, you, you don't, it, it's not as I mean, I'm trying to find a word. It's not as like, there's not as many stickers, so it's not as kind of in your face uh, in terms of what the club's going to look like when you put stickers. It's got one simple one right at the top of the club head in the center. So really, it's not anything that's too distracting or anything like that. Um, but, it, you know, the simulation side of it is really good. Uh, I, I think the uh, that FX Pro or FSX uh, 2020 with, uh, I think it's, you know, like 10 courses you have. Um, you know, we went up to... You know, you could go through and and just you know, it, like I said, it was it was really easy to use. It was pretty quick. Um, you know, you didn't have to. You know, it probably will depend a little bit on your your PC and things like that or uh, iPad. But I mean, getting between, you know, playing one hole, getting to the next. There's not a huge lag time or anything like that. You're not waiting, you know, minutes for stuff to load or uh, anything like that. It pretty much as soon as you're done with a hole, you can move on. You go to the next hole and play. So if you're looking to knock out nine holes kind of quick after dinner or something like that easy to do and like i said the, the short game side of it and the putting side of it is is really solid it's it's definitely better than you know i used to go to a a place around here that had i don't know which brand they were but full huge bays that were simulators and, and they weren't you know you know trackman or gc quad units or whatever but they were uh you know they were still expensive units and, the, and you know the loading time and the short game stuff was never great and putting always i mean you almost didn't want to putt and on this, like, you don't mind doing it. I mean, you, you'll probably still set your gimmies to a decent range just because uh, you'll want to kind of speed things along. Um, and, you know, it's not 100%. You know, putting's not 100% what it is. And there's a variety of factors for that. But, uh, you know, when you hit a good putt, uh, it, it pretty much goes on the line that uh, that you see. Or, you know, you can set up the grid uh, on, on, the, on the greens and, and all those little details in the simulation side of it. Um, so, the other, you know, the other thing of it, too, is... is the thing's accurate enough where instead of having to like rotate where you're aiming, you can just basically kind of hit it a little left and it's accurate enough to see it, see the ball kind of go left and then it'll, you know, break back right or whatever uh, break you have in the putt. It'll kind of, you know, find that. Um, but yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, testing wise, the full swings is really what you care about. And, and like I said, they're extremely accurate. Um, it's none of those where, wow, that was a bad swing and it still ended up in the fairway. If, if, you know, you hit a big old hook off the toe, it's, it's going into the trees on the left, or if you, you know, hit a big old slice, it's going right. Um, 
you know, shots that are hit low in the face, you know, go low. I mean, it, it's exactly what you think. I mean, the swing you put on it is what you're going to see uh, on that little golf course, and it's 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 pretty uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's definitely something that if you're a northerner, or, you know, or you got a rainy day, whatever, if you're stuck inside, the simulation part of it is it will definitely scratch some of the itch uh, that you have to play some golf. Um, but you know, from the side of it of you know hitting your rogue ST, team, you know, rogue ST versus versus your stealth. Uh, it is definitely going to give you more than enough accurate data to compare those two and decide which one you're going to take to the course that day. Um, it's just, you know, like I said, the, the accuracy of it is just really, really good. And it's repeatable and it's fast. I mean, there's just, there, there's nothing, you know, there, there, I, I like pretty much everything about it. it it's really, really good. Um, and, you know, like I, said, I, I, like I said, the one knock I'd have is, you know, the software on the iPad is a little slow. Um, but once you... Either you know, either you go go into it knowing that, or you know, you hook it up to a, a PC or something like that. Um, I know if you're on the range, you know, outdoors at your club or at you know on your local range, you won't have that option. But again, I, I don't think that's anything too too big in in terms of an issue. Um, and then again, having the ability to you know select what you want for your budget or your uh, desires in terms of what you need. You know, like for me, uh, I would probably go. You know, I mean, I would probably go the gold route only because, not because of the simulator side, because that part of it is kind of small to me. I mean, I, I I like playing a little golf with some friends and things like that, uh, but I kind of like having all the, the club data, the, you know, ball data, all that. Um, so gold kind of appeals to me more, um, but I could definitely see a lot of players who would be super happy with just the, you know, the basic or the silver, depending on if they use that simulator software, you know, so, uh, the simulator side or not. Uh, but the basic stuff, I mean, especially if you're just tuning up and keeping your game, you know, sharp and all that in, you know, during the off season or at the range, definitely more than enough software or more than enough uh, there. And the other thing, it's just, it's very accurate. So, um, you know, like I said, out, out of everything I've hit that isn't the super big, you know, 20K and above stuff, um, this is probably one of the most accurate, uh, uh, accurate units that, uh, that I've hit. I mean, it's really, it's really good. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, it's. When you're hitting it next to other things, uh, and you see how repetitive, repeatable it is, and how and how good it is, I mean, it's um, it it definitely makes a difference. So, like I said, I, I hit it against we had Trackman one day, and then we had another unit set up the other day, and I mean, the comparisons to Trackman were phenomenal. It was right there, and then uh, you know the the other unit we used that was um, uh, that was there that was radar based uh, definitely saw some more variation in shots compared to uh, compared to the Launch Pro. So. Launch Pro is really good. Like I said, if it's something that uh, you're looking for, a launch monitor, whether it's, you know, for the winter, whether it's to take to the range and, you know, kind of work on your game and get some details, compare clubs, whatever, um, I think you got to look at it. I think you definitely have to. Um, and if you're somebody who does a lot of indoor stuff, I mean, I think it's got to be, it's, you know, definitely very high on your list of, of things to, to consider there because indoors, it, it, it's really, really good there. And I think, uh, you know, in, in terms of, you know, being accurate indoors and out, I mean, it's it, it's really going to be tough to beat. So, and then again, having the ability to, you know, budget-wise fit into whatever, you know, it, it, you'll fit into your needs, it's it, it's pretty huge. So, uh, to get that accuracy at, at that price, it, it's it's pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it. Like I said, right now, I don't have it in my hands. I don't have it here to visually display because, like I said, a bunch of guys at the office all wanted to try it. So, it is with uh, another person at the moment. Um but hopefully we'll get it uh, back soon so I can take it out and mess with it some more. But overall, uh, super impressed with the, with, with the, the Bushnell Launch Pro. Uh, if you just go to bushnellgolf.com, uh, the Launch Pro's on there, and you can check out kind of all the all the de like full detail of, of what each plan has uh, and the unit. But um, in terms of you know what it is, I mean, it, it feels like you're playing with a much more expensive unit. Uh, you know, it just has that feel to it. The 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 design in the case is built really well. Uh, you know. For your your three thousand bucks, which I know is is not cheap, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, but what you get, I mean, it's it's super, it, it's a high quality unit. It, it definitely feels like it's going to be durable if you're going to be you know taking it back and forth to the range and things like that. Um, it's it just definitely doesn't feel cheap, anything like that. It's got a touch screen on it. I mean, all the features of it are are really really high end, and, and definitely you feel like you're getting a good value for your money. That's for sure. So. Like I said, if you're looking for a personal launch monitor, definitely check out the, the, the Bushnell Launch Pro. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed with it uh, at all. And uh, like I said, if you're, if you're somebody who, you know, 
is looking to, to, to spend a little money to whether you're you wanted the simulation side whether you want the kind of geeky detail side you're going to get both uh if you want it <laughs> with this uh with this unit so uh check it out when you get a chance like i said bushnellgolf.com it's it, it, it's really good so uh if you have any questions anything like that hit me up at uh on instagram it's the easiest way at club junkie pod um i know i usually do a wednesday q a but unfortunately we're stuck on a plane um so that didn't happen and uh and I do have to say this about planes. I am I hate flying on planes just because I hate being crammed into a tiny seat to go anywhere. And I know the Arizona flight is like four hours. It's just under. Uh, coming back was actually longer this time. I don't know if it was wind or what, but anyway. But I typically even like pay extra money to get like an exit row seat so I can be a little more comfortable, whatever. But the fact that certain people get on planes, and I'm sitting in an exit row, and people get on planes and... I just have to say, like, uh, the people who sat next to me, the, there was a, a couple, the gentleman, like myself, a little more husky. I get it. It's tough to fit in the seat. But when you make zero effort to stay in your kind of little confined effort, you know, confined area, and you spread your legs out, and you just kind of sit in the seat and take over both armrests, like, I mean, I get it. You're in the middle seat. That sucks. But it just, I don't know. It, it's just, like, the most inconsiderate thing. It was just, it wasn't a great flight that I literally sat there, crushed in my seat, you know, because I'm not going to, like, force myself back on this other guy. I mean, whatever. But it was just, it just wasn't great. So it was uh, one of those things where, I mean, thankfully I was in the, even the exit row, so I had a little more leg room. But, I mean, it, it was, you know, one of those things where it's like, come on, buddy. Like, just have a little, con you know, consideration for uh, us other gentlemen who are not, you know, thin as well. Uh, and then the worst part, so I get stuck, you know, next to two people. And like I said, this guy and I are fighting for space, basically. And I'll look over to the right of me. And there's two women who have maybe a combined weight of 200 pounds, maybe, um, are in the exit row next to me to my right. Because I was, I was trying to get the aisle seat so I have at least some place to, you know, put some of my mass into the aisle at least. And they have no one in the middle seat. And the one girl at one point was laying down across two seats sleeping uh, while the other woman was against the, you know, against the window sleeping. And I just, I've never been more jealous in my life. So, anyway, that's my uh, my my flight rant. But uh, anyway, that's all I've got for today. Again, Bushnell Golf, uh, BushnellGolf.com. Check out the Launch Pro. Um, it's uh, it's a pretty impressive. So, anyway, that's all I got today. And uh, hopefully, you guys have a good rest of the week. Have a good weekend, and uh, we'll talk later.